to create an XRF graph from data acquired on the IDEAS beamline without using the provided Macros Excel file. Simply open up the data folder containing your data, right click your first sample set and select the open with option. Now choose any text software you're most comfortable with. Notepad is probably the easiest to use. Once you've made your selection, choose OK. Now we want to copy all of this data starting from raw 1x all the way down to the bottom excluding this ICR1 and on. So if we go back up to the top, make sure you select the raw 1x right before that. Go all the way down to the bottom, hold shift as you select just after the last number input uh, in that column set. And that will select that data. Now right click it and select copy. Now we need to paste it into Excel. So open up a blank Excel workbook and in cell A1 right click and select paste. Alrighty, so that's how we'll import each sample file in, but before we move on to the next one we need to rename a few things. Uh, raw 1x in cell A1 should be renamed to energy EV, as this is the energy detected by our detectors. This raw 1x can be deleted, as this is the raw data that has not been recalibrated for instrumentation effects. Uh, what is now column B is now the corrected data that has been corrected for instrumentational effects. So we can relabel this, the sample name. Alrighty, now we're ready to import the next sample set. So we can minimize Excel, close the previous notepad, and open up the next one. Now your computer should remember which text software to select. So simply double click the next sample file. Uh, now select just before the raw 1x again, scroll all the way down, and hold shift as you select just after the last data input, ignoring this ICR1 and OCR1. Right click and select copy, open up the Excel book, now this time in cell C1, right click and select paste. Now we do not need a second energy column, and again we're going to delete the raw one. So highlight column header C and hold control as you highlight column header D. Right click and select delete. Now rename this new corrected one as your sample name. Alrighty, and we'll repeat the process as many more times as it takes to get all of your sample files in. I will be doing one more for example. So selecting just before the raw one X again, scroll all the way down to the bottom, Hold shift as you select the last data entry in the column set, ignoring the ICR1 and OCR1. Right click it and select copy. Over to Excel. Now this time in cell D1. Right click and select paste. Again, we'll get rid of the energy column and the raw data from the new sample set. So highlight their header columns, or the column headers, and select delete. Rename that corrected one to the sample name. Alrighty, so that is how we import XRF data into Excel. Now it's a matter of trimming this up just a little further. We do not need this row number two. That'll just uh, put a gap in our data. So we can delete that by selecting the row two header and uh, selecting delete. Now we're ready to create an XRF graph from this. We can select the column A header. Hold shift as you select the last column header of your samples. For me, it's column header D. Uh, go to Excel's Insert tab. Go over here to the right to the Charts drop-down menu for the Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart, and choose the Scatter with Smooth Lines option, and that will create your XRF graph. I'm going to zoom in on this, because this graph needs a lot of work. First and foremost, it needs a title. Your graph title will probably be more appropriate than mine, probably XRF and then your sample name. Alrighty, so now we need to zoom in on the important data. And the important data is this stuff way down over here. These two large peaks to the middle, these are the scatter peaks. The energy, or the photons that we sent in on our sample that have scattered off of our sample. This far right peak is called the elastic scatter peak where the photon simply skipped off the sample without losing any energy. The taller peak, or occasionally the taller peak, but the more left peak, is the inelastic scatter peak, where the photons have skipped off our sample, depositing a little bit of energy onto the sample itself. 
We are not concerned with this in our XRF graph. Different kinds of studies concern themselves with this. So we will trim our data to be just this intersection in here. So we can double click the X axis numbers along the bottom to open up our format axis options uh, menu. Now, uh, because our scatter peaks start roughly around 12,000 EV, we'll lower our maximum bound to about 13,000 EV. And we can see that there's a little uplift right here from our scatter peaks. Now, the way the detector is designed, uh, and the way the whole setup is designed, it's designed for higher energy photons that are not absorbed by the air. And so the minimum energy that this detector can reliably detect in air is roughly 2,000 EV. So I'm going to set this a little lower at 1,000 EV to get rid of some excess uh, space. Now these peaks are incredibly small. And so I need to zoom in on them by repeating the process we have just done along the y-axis. So simply double click the y-axis uh, numbers and you'll open up their format axis options. We always want our minimum bounds to be at zero because you cannot detect a, a minimum or a negative number of photons. And our actual tallest peak that is not a scatter peak is at, for this case, roughly 10,000. So I can zoom in more appropriately to that size. And suddenly we can see a lot more structure. Looking again, I can see that if I cut this off at 9,000, I'll still have all of my data inside. So I'll choose 9,000 for my top. Now, to show a few more increments in our units, so that these lines across are more, uh, I can decrease my major units uh, to have more of those bars. So if I half the amount, I have twice as many bars. We can repeat the same process for our x-axis. Double click the x-axis numbers, open that up again. And this time we can see that there is nothing detected below 2,000. So I can make that over to 2,000, show more of the important data. And we can also see our scatter peak starts fairly quickly. And looking in here, there's typically bromine at roughly 12,000 or 11,900 EV. And I can see there's a perhaps a tiny little bump here that I don't want to get rid of. So I can set my maximum bound to be 12,500 to make sure that I still show as much of this graph as I can and minimizing the amount of scatter peak. Now these units are far and few between, so I'm going to decrease my major units to something more appropriate. That's pretty good there. Now, the final thing that this graph is missing is axes titles. So if I go up here to the top right, this green cross is the charts elements options. Click that and click the axis titles options. The y-axis is our photon count, the number of photons uh, counted by our detectors. The bottom axis down here is our energy axis. So we can label that energy EV. And there you go, an XRF graph.